check the fuel. Yep, we got some. Almost full. This would matter. So, for everyone that doesn't know or hasn't watched previous videos, um, all of my calves I run on my dad's property and I pay him rent. Um, so, just to pay for some of the rent, of course, I do some work for my dad and that just covers some of my expenses and for him letting me use his property. So, um, I'm on his tractor using his bush hog today. Um, Fortunately, I have been, since I've been bush hogging for my dad, which has been, I don't know, six or seven years now, um, I've always been on this tractor, which is nice. The tractor he had before this was old and didn't have air conditioning, didn't have a top on it, and we also had a different bush hog. And my brother was the lucky one that was on that tractor and bush hog, so. Um, he had it much more tough than I did. Sit out there for 10 hours a day in the hot sun with no AC. So I'm um, pretty lucky I got I got to use this. Um, and when I first started, we still had the old Batwing Bush Hog, and I think it was Bush Hog brand. Um, that thing kept shearing bolts, and so my dad ended up buying a newer Bush Hog a couple of years ago. And, yeah, so that's what I've been using. That's what I'll be using today. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, not really any, any complaints besides the fact that it's supposed to sort of vibrate some of the grass clippings off the top. And it doesn't really do that that well. So um, anyway, I'll get it going here for you and show you guys some bush hogging. Okay, so we're going to be in B2. And These fields here, as you can tell, there's not much um, to be clipped, or maybe you can't tell, I don't know, but um, these fields we just grazed off with the cows, and we grazed it down pretty short, and uh, so now we're coming through and clipping off the tops of the uh, fescue seed and stems, and we're also clipping down some of these cockleburs and weeds so that they don't get to reproduce. Another reason why we are clipping is this stuff will turn into, these pastures will turn into, uh, they'll turn into fall pasture and stockpile for the winter. And so around here we can stockpile fescue and use it as a feed source through a lot of the winter um, because fescue will hold up to freezing cold temperatures. And so we will just grow it out through the fall and use it as winter pasture. Um, and a way to increase your yields for stockpile fescue is you clip it and then you put some nitrogen fertilizer on. Uh, normally about 40 or 50 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And that'll drastically increase your yields. And clipping it off, we're just taking care of the weeds and getting all the mature grass that the cows won't eat. We're cutting that off and getting some new growth on here. So this year I'm going to try some strip grazing, but most of the time we just rotate them like we would a normal pasture. Um, 
But I am going to try some strip grazing as we already have electric fence set up here so I can easily, easily do it. Um, so there will be more videos on that as well. So now I'm going to adjust the height on here. Um, this next portion I'm doing is a lot of Bermuda and so I need a little bit shorter. I'm trying to do this with one hand, sorry. And now it'll drop all the way to there. That should be the right height. I think that's what I had it on before. So here we go. Also, some of the essentials, gotta have a snack. And you gotta have headphones on, protect your hearing. So if I'm talking loud, I apologize. It's the headphones. So a lot of these pastures have a lot of Bermuda grass in them and if you're not familiar with Bermuda it is um, a warm season grass and it, it's pretty thick. It grows pretty thick, a lot thicker than fescue. Um, it's also the leaves are pretty thin and fibrous and so um, whenever the summer's over and it starts cooling down the Bermuda starts drying out and basically it's just straw left. But it's so thick that straw will often keep the uh, fescue, clover, and other cool season grasses from growing during the fall. And so since we are trying to grow fall pasture and winter forage, uh, the Bermuda doesn't really do us any good. So my dad likes to clip the Bermuda down pretty short during, its, during the end of its life cycle this time of year just to let the other things have enough room and air and sunshine to grow. And so that's a lot of what we do. Um, Missouri, we're kind of in a unique area because we can grow, we can grow plants that they can only grow up north and we can often grow stuff that grows down south. Uh, but mainly this is fescue country. Yes, we can grow Bermuda, uh, but most people down south you know, Bermuda is their main forage as well as Bahia grass, which I'm not too familiar with. But um, here it's kind of just, I don't know, it's its something else that people have. It doesn't grow as good here as it would down south, but it does grow and does uh, kind of fill in that, that summer gap when fescue and other cool seasons aren't growing. So um, that's why we have it. Uh, it is kind of taking over the farm, which isn't a good thing, which is another reason why we're clipping it because we definitely need the spring and fall cool season grasses to come up. And like I said, Bermuda doesn't really cut it for us then, so. Thank you. 